I am Dracula. Oh, it's, it's really good to see you. I don't know what happened to the driver and my luggage and... Well, and with all this, I, I thought I was in the wrong place. I bid you welcome. This is the story of Dracula, the Transylvanian terror, the nobleman Nosferatu. Adapted for the screen numerous times, all based to some extent on the 1897 novel by Bram Stoker, there's arguably no more influential a take than Universal Pictures' 1931 version. Directed by former circus performer Todd Browning, based on a play that had wowed New York, when you watch it today, Dracula 1931 feels like a mix of the groundbreaking and the stilted, where jaw-dropping production design and umbral lighting, much influenced by F.W. Murnau's take on the Nosferatu legend ten years earlier, mixed with rather less inspired and stagey moments, remnants of silent cinema. But for most of the 85-minute running time, one thing never fails to captivate and bewitch. Dracul himself. There are far worse things waiting man then death performed with barely concealed glee by the man who had played the count on broadway 48 year old hungarian american bella blasco better known as bella lugosi picture dracula in your head and it's likely not gary oldman or frank langella or even christopher lee that you imagine even if you don't realize it it's probably Lugosi. The hair, the cape, the voice, the chilling composure you see in his eerily lit eyes. Lugosi's florid weirdness remains the blueprint for all other princes of darkness. Um. Yeah. That also makes it one of the earliest examples of a role leading to that curse all actors fear, typecasting. Even though Lugosi had pushed hard to play Dracula on screen after the film and the play before it, he feared his audience might only see him as someone sinister and actively pursued lighter parts through the 30s. But with that accent and that stare, gothic horror proved a natural, if sometimes frustrating, home. And frequent pairings with Universal's other monster star, Boris Karloff, soon followed. Check out Tim Burton's glorious 1994 biopic of low-budget film legend Ed Wood to see how Lugosi's life and career came to an end in the 50s, final years unbefitting such an iconic performer. It reminds me of the broken battlements of my own castle in Transylvania. Oh, Lucy, you're so romantic. Laugh all you like. I think he's fascinating. But in 1931, all that was still to come. I like to watch Dracula imagining I'm one of those audience members of the era, seeing things that are now so familiar to us unfold for the first time. The Count's poise, his affectations, the European gloom of Transylvania, Whitby and London, so atmospherically captured by German cinematographer Carl Freund. This was pre-code Hollywood, a few years between the coming of sound and the introduction of censorship guidelines. Audiences were seeing and hearing things in what was for the time lurid detail. As a result, Dracula, released cheekily on Valentine's Day 1931, was not just a much needed hit for Universal, but the beginning of their celebrated run of horror movies films that petrified the cinema-going public for the next decade and which are still doing it today. 